everybody? It's your girl, Precious Mary, and I'm here to review episode 5 of Dear White People, season 2, my girl's episode, Joelle. Now, as I mentioned in Sam's episode, one of the issues that I had with season 1 of Dear White People is that Joelle didn't have her own episode, so I'm so happy that in season 2, Joelle has her own episode, and I identify so much with her, it's, it's ridiculous. So, Joelle, she, oh, since season one, and it's also put out there in season two, that she always is, like, second fiddle to, to Sam, whether it's with her thoughts, whether it's, you know, being in Sam's shadows, whether it's in the show that Sam has with Dear White People, she's always, or even in Love Interest, she's always second fiddle uh, to, to Sam. And I love the the beginning montage of her episode in season two where, you know, she was always first place in everything. She was valedictorian in her high school. She always had she always has the highest grades. Even in Winchester University, she's always first place in her class. But when it comes to Sam, she's always in second place. She's always in Sam's uh, sh shadow. Um so in this, even in season one of Dare White People, she was in Sam's uh, shadow. So here we get to see her in her own light. Um, I love this episode for the simple fact that we got to see Joelle. And she met this guy that put her, that put her first. As we all know, Joelle has feelings for Reggie. But as I said in his episode, he's always distracted. He's distracted by Sam, his feelings for Sam. He's distracted with the trauma that he went through with the cop. And then, of course, he was distracted with the girls. He was basically fucking his feelings away. <laughs> that, was, that was the montage in his episode. So he has all these distractions, and it sort of keeps him away from, from Joelle. Um, so Joelle, she's finally saying to herself, you know what, I need to move on, I need to, you know, I need to get him out of my system in a way, and she met this guy called Trevor, um, and woo, just like Joelle, I fell for it, I fell for him, I just loved the intellectual conversations that Joelle and Trevor were having with each other, I I loved it. Like, it's either you meet a guy, and, and, and the thing is that he's also very attractive. So it's either you meet a guy that's very intellectual, but you're not that attractive to him, or you meet a guy that you're very attractive to, but the conversation, the stimulation of the mind is just not there. At least that's what happens with me. So Joelle was able to get the best of both worlds for now and I just loved the scenes with them when they were talking to each other and they're just bouncing ideas off of each other and um of course the red flag happened when she took him to um at least the red flag that I noticed is when she took him to A&P dormitory to basically show him where she is he was just judging everybody and I couldn't even understand why he was so, I don't want to say uppity, but why he was looking down on everybody. And even I started to feel a little uncomfortable with him. And then Trevor was going off. They were watching an equivalent of a parody of, I think it's Empire. And Trevor said something and Joelle was like... <laughs> she was like, Trevor, are you a hotel? And he was like, you know, hotel means peace be with you. And she was like, ah, oh, damn, I got got by a hotel. And even I was like, me too, girl, me too. <laughs> and of course, he just, he started calling Sam. Sam came to Joelle and she was like, are you okay? Are you fine? And, and Trevor was like, Oh, he called her a half a Rican or some crap like that. I don't know what, what that is. And then Reggie came, you know, and then Coco came to report about 
the they were able to book the, the guy that they were trying to get to come to the campus. And Trevor was just, you know, just calling out everybody and just being so overly judgmental on them. And of course, Joel put him in his place. And this episode, it reminded me so much of the time I almost got got by Hotep. And I don't even know, I don't think the term Hotep existed back then. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty new to these things, but this happened to me, I think, was it 2010 or 2011? So, I was in Barnes & Noble, right? And <laughs> and I was reading, I was just going through all the sections and I was in the astrology section and I was reading this astrology book. And then this guy, black guy, not bad looking, glasses, he had a beard, um, dark skin. He approached me, he was like, oh, you know, you're into astrology. He started, he basically started a conversation with me. And I appreciate that because usually in New York, you know, I live in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. And usually when a guy that you don't know, a complete total stranger, a guy who's interested in you, who tries to, to start a conversation with you, it usually starts off with, Ayo ma! Or, ear! You know? <laughs> One of those two. So I appreciated that this guy formed a complete sentence with me in order to start a conversation with me. <laughs> so... Um, so we're just talking, bouncing ideas off of each other. He's asked me about my background, asking about his background. You know, when I told him that I, that I'm Nigerian and specifically my family is from the Igbo tribe. He was like, oh, you know, you're African, that's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. You know, all that stuff. He's bouncing ideas off of me. He's telling me his background, how his family is from here and all that stuff. And so eventually, uh, he walked me, once we were finished talking in Barnes & Noble, um, he walked me to my bus stop. And he was like, you know, I really enjoyed this conversation with you. I enjoyed talking with you, you know. I would like to have your number if you don't mind giving it to me so that, you know, we can continue this. And, child, I ate that shit up. <laughs> you remember that scene in... Um, Season three of Game of Thrones, when Marjorie was telling Sansa, "Oh, you know, you should come to, you should come to High Garden. You will love it there." And Sansa was like, um, "I don't think the queen would allow me to leave." And Marjorie was like, "You mean the queen regent? When I marry Joffrey, I'll be queen, and you'll be able to go to High Garden. And if you were to marry Loras, and when she said that to Sansa, remember Sansa? She just." She just slowly smiled, you know, and that's exactly what I did when the guy was like, you know, I enjoyed this conversation with you and I would like to, if you don't mind, if you can give me your number so that we can continue this because, you know, I enjoyed talking to you and I was just like, okay, <laughs> that's exactly what I did. So I gave him my my number and you know I got on the bus and he texted me and was like oh this is oh, I'm not gonna say his name um because I don't know if he's gonna watch this <laughs> um but but yeah so for like days you know a couple of days after that we're talking to each other over the phone bouncing off ideas and blah, blah, blah. and then the red flag happened. So, he started talking about marriage. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool, whatever. You know, this guy obviously knows what he wants. And then he started bringing up polygamy. And he was like, you know, since you told me you're evil, you know, I know, you know, a lot of Africans, they did polygamy. Did, did any members of your family practice polygamy? <laughs> And I was like, well, yeah, my great-grandfather had 32 wives. And he was like, yeah, you see, that's what I want. And as soon as he said that, I, the red flag just went off. And I was like, 
Oh shit, here we go. <laughs> and he was like, Yeah, that's what that's what I want. This is what black people need. We need to come together, you know. Monogamy man is not meant to be with more than one more than one um man is not meant to be with only one woman. He's supposed to be with a whole bunch of other women. And I asked him, Well, what if a woman wants to have more than one wants to have more than one husband? He was like, Nah, 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 nah that, that ain't right. A man is supposed to have as many women as as he can. You know what I'm saying, sister? You should understand where I'm coming from because you know you're from that culture and I said well yes I am from that culture but I have seen how in certain and there are some some cases where it works and there are some cases where it doesn't work it doesn't work all the time it doesn't work for everybody and I know for me it would not work for me and he was like you see that's you get brainwashed by, by by Catholic religion you know you're not even supposed to be Catholic and I was like oh lord Jesus and I was like I understand what you're saying but you can't bring in this has nothing to do with the Catholic religion because even in present day Nigeria well this was back in 2011 but even now in 2008 there are still Niger, even though they're Catholic, there is still some um, Nigerian tribes, even some Igbo tribes that still practice in polygamy, despite the fact that they are Catholic. Um, he was like, oh, you don't have to worry about nothing. Like, you can be a sister wife. You, you'll be the first wife, and I'll get another woman. And I was like, listen, <laughs> I was like, listen, I wish you the best. <laughs> Um, but I know that is not the lifestyle for me. I do not want that. And he just kept bringing up the fact that I'm evil, bringing up the fact that I'm Nigerian, bringing up the fact that, you know, the Europeans went and destroyed the African lifestyle and all this other stuff. And I was just like, <sighs> I ended the conversation and I told him, you know, I think we should go our separate ways. <laughs> I wish you the best. And I hope that you, you'll be able to find a woman that shares the same goals as you. Because I told her there are some women that don't mind being in a polygamous relationship. And I think that's what you should be looking for instead of trying to convince me to be a part of that. And, you know, he just kept going off. And then he was like, all right, sister, you know, I wish you the best you know, and, and, you know, I hope you change your mind, you know, I'm always here, I was like, okay, yeah, and I hung up the phone, and then I immediately deleted his number from my cell phone, so that was my experience <laughs> of being got, getting got by a hotel, I, I don't know if in 2011 if the term hotel existed, but I didn't know what to consider him as, but I just, this Joel episode just made me like I was literally in tears when Joel was like, "Are you a hotel? Damn, I got got by a hotel." I was literally laughing in tears because it reminded reminded me of the experience that I had back in 2011. And ooh. <laughs> so I guess that's my review for for Joel. Um. There was really nothing really that deep that went on in this um, episode, except I noticed this season, this second season is about the secret societies that existed within Winchester. And Trevor did reveal some of the secret societies that were in um, Winchester to Joel. And Joel showed him that the Underground Rail Railroad was, of course, underneath um, Winchester and when she showed him that there were markets on a wall and I believe that that was part of their huge map that runaway slaves were using to get to the north um, and I don't want to ruin this for for my review for the next episode but for the final episode but um, you know the whole thing with Reggie and, and Joelle you know, Reggie asked Joel, why did you go after someone like, like Trevor? Like he, you know, you deserve better than that. And she was like, well, unlike some people, and she was throwing shade at Reggie, he made me feel wanted. He, he chased after me. He chose me, you know, and I think that's so important with the dynamics between men and women. But I think, like I said, with Reggie, it's not entirely, well, yes, it is. 
I don't know if I can put the blame fully on Reggie, but like I said, Reggie was distracted with his feelings for Sam, with the trauma that he experienced with the cop, and then, of course, with numbing his pain, his trauma by having sex with multiple women. Um, and eventually, he came to a realization that the only person that he truly wanted was, was Joelle. And I will go in depth with that when I finally get, when I finally get to the last episode, reviewing the, the last episode, because I have a lot to say about that. Um, well, not a lot, but I do have something to say about that. And I don't want to talk about it now because, you know, this is only Joelle's episode. Um, but it just goes to show you, if you're interested in somebody, just let them know, tell them how you feel, make them feel wanted. Everybody wants to feel wanted by, by somebody, especially by somebody that they, that they also want. Um, so, so yeah, that is my short review of Joelle's episode. I just, I love her. I love her. I love her. There, there are so many things about her that reminds me of, of me. Especially, you know, getting got by a whole tub. <laughs> um, and in some cases, playing sex, second fiddle to, to some friends. But Joelle really showed that, I think unlike Sam, Joelle is willing to, to listen. Joelle is willing to not compromise, but she's able to come from a place of understanding. Like, um, even in her episode, we see that her and Gabe, I think Gabe was asking to help her with, with something, I think with his documentary. And she was trying to hide it from Sam because she knew that Sam would feel a certain type of way if Gabe, if she was to find out that she, Joelle, is helping Gabe with his documentary. So I guess out of everybody, Gabe felt as if he can go to Joelle um, to get some information from her rather than going to Sam. And of course it's understandable because him and Sam, you know, they broke up. So I guess he didn't want to pour any salt on the wound by going to Sam. Instead, he went to Joelle. Um, so it just goes to show Joelle, she's, she's approachable. She's, I, I wouldn't say easygoing, but she's very understanding. Um, and, and yeah, and she doesn't fit the stereotype, just like Coco, Joelle doesn't fit the stereotype of, you know, the everyday black girl, especially the everyday dark-skinned um, black girl, and she just, she also, she's another character that has a lot of pride within herself, um, and we also get, got to find out that she's a pre-med student, and she comes from a very, up upper middle class family her family is like the Huxtables I think she said her mother is a lawyer and her father is a doctor I think the creator of the show basically said yeah Joelle is she's a Huxtable um so yeah he basically modeled Joelle's family from the Cosby show um so so yeah so that's my review on Joelle. I hope you enjoyed my story of when I got got by a hotel. <laughs> uh, so the next episode, I'm going to do it right after this video. Lionel has another episode and I absolutely love it. Brooke, I can't wait to talk about her. Um, so I will see you guys later and I hope you guys enjoy your day. Bye. Tell me if you want me to. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs>